Hello everyone, today we're going to create a button that will have a 3D transformation effect. Um, it's good to mention that it's not actually a 3D rotation per se, but we will be using a plugin called Skew Dan. I recommend you download this and install this plugin into Figma. It's called Skew Dan. We are going to use that to create this animation. We're going to start with using the text tool and I'm going to create just a random button. Let's say that this is a button that will enable you to add something, right? So it's just gonna say add. We're gonna have a veneer next and we're gonna have a plus icon. So I'm just gonna use a good old rectangle to create the plus icon, right? I'm gonna group this and then add this into a auto layout by pressing shift A both of these elements. So this is gonna be our button. And we're gonna select this auto layout and then go here. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to learn more about auto layout, make sure to watch these videos. They should be on the screen right now. And we're gonna select text baseline alignment. Uh, this way, the plus icon is gonna be aligned precisely with you know the bottom edge of, with the text baseline essentially, which is this blue line right here. Now we're gonna add some padding. So let's say 30 and, 20 and 10. I guess, um, and we're gonna turn this into a blue button. So it's gonna be a blue button with white contents. So I'm just gonna do this, maybe adjust these paddings a little bit. So it's gonna be about this big. It's gonna look like this, brilliant. So this is our add button, gonna have this. This icon is gonna have the overlay blend mode so that you know it creates this nice uh, effect. Uh, I'm gonna also add a another fill. It's gonna be a white radial gradient and with the overlay mode. And that's again gonna create a similar color effect, but we're gonna just you know do do this, right? It makes it look interesting. So this is our add button. And we're also gonna wrap this button into another auto layout. So I'm gonna select the button and press shift A again. Um, this is gonna be called button wrapper and it's not gonna have any paddings. I'm gonna remove that. However, it's gonna have a background. It's gonna be dark blue like this and it's gonna be fully rounded so that it's, you know, basically hidden, right? So um, you can see um, the dark blue background. Now we're gonna create a frame. The frame is gonna be 1000 by 600. Oops, we have to disable the lock. Uh, and maybe maybe it's gonna be bigger. So let's go for 1500, 1500 by right, something like, like this. I'm gonna take this button wrapper inside of which we have the button and then wrap that again, not in a auto layout, but in a frame. So I'm gonna select it and then press command option G and we create a frame called frame two. So that's gonna be a button frame. And right now what we're gonna do is select the button wrapper inside the button frame, center it right here and just position that, you know, make sure that the constraints are set to center and center. This, make, uh, this ensures that when we do this, when we change the size of the frame, it's gonna stay in the middle, right? That's what we want. And right now we are ready to go here and create a component from this, as well as a variant. So it's gonna be a button with two variants. Right now, we're gonna select the first frame, the default state, and just change the size of the frame to 470 by 200, let's say, or maybe 300 even, right? So we have enough space around the button. Uh, we're gonna do the same with this variant. So that's 470 by 300. And right now we're gonna use the do that plugin that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. Um, I'm gonna select the button wrapper and then go to plugins and skew that. Here's what the plugin can do. You have to first select a frame and then you click and drag these controls to change the skewing basically, right? And then when you're happy with the result, you're gonna click apply. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this. So theoretically what should happen right now is 
when we define smart animation between these two states, the button should animate into this position and uh, skew, skewing kind of situation it has going on, right? So theoretically, these edges, the top and bottom one, should kind of slide to the sides, if you know what I mean. And then we're just gonna define that it's gonna rotate a little bit and then move upwards. So it's gonna, it should have this very specific movement. Um, you may be able to visualize it. So essentially it should move from this state to this state, theoretically. Uh, hopefully everything works. Then since this is a alt layout, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be attempting to imitate a 3D kind of bevels or edges of this button. So I'm gonna select the button wrapper and then adjust the paddings so that the bottom one is, let's say 10 and the right one is um, 10 as well. So you can see that it immediately creates this effect that is uh, that looks as if it were 3D, but it actually isn't. It's just it's just um, an auto layout that is you know an auto layout that has different uh, paddings basically, but it looks 3D, and that's all we care about, right? So this is this is kind of the second state, and we're also gonna add a shadow. So I'm gonna select the button wrapper in the first state and then go to effects and add a shadow that's gonna be blurred and we're gonna have you know this color maybe it's gonna be just playing around with, with the whole shadow effect um, next step is basically taking this uh, effect and pasting it here however we're gonna modify it a little bit so that it appears to be casting a strong shadow onto a onto a uh, surface above which it's levitating i guess right so we're gonna be attempting to do that maybe we should go for a darker color so why don't we do this um maybe the blur should be we should go for a bigger blur maybe not um the shadow should should be you know remain at the same x position maybe perhaps in terms of the opacity yeah we also want to make sure that the shadow is approximately in the same position as in this state which would mean we would have to move this upwards a little bit so now the shadow is around here and same here right the shadow is around here so that approximately the same area so right now it's um this looks more of like a glow, this looks more like, like a shadow. We're gonna have to figure out if that's actually something that is not a problem when interacting with this. All right, and the final adjustment, uh, that would be going to prototype, bring this little thing with this little circle and basically say while hovering, change to variant two. We named this variant two, but it's gonna be called default and hover. So should say change to property hover, right? Smart animate is is out and we're gonna keep this at 80, 80 milliseconds. And then yeah, when, when we hover out, it should revert back to this state. We have this test screen right here. So let's just rename this test screen smaller so that it fits onto my screen. We're gonna go to assets and then click and drag this over here. It's, it's being, it's called button frame, but we're just gonna say, uh, levitating button component and now the moment of truth is this gonna act the way we want and it kind of is it kind of is acting the way we want uh, the only problem is that we get this white uh, rectangle for some reason going out uh, of the button when we hover uh, when we you know move the mouse outside the area but we could try and fix that by removing the shadow from the default state maybe i don't know and then maybe let's let's make this a bit smaller i mean this is too large for a button right let's reset this right so this looks better i think right don't you think it has the desired interaction the, it has the correct movement this really looks as if levitating the only thing that's kind of acting weird is the shadow so we're gonna let's let's figure a workaround so let's actually not make this a shadow effect but let's use a rectangle that is blurred so that way figma is not doing calculations with a shadow 
but rather a rectangle that is blurred and maybe, maybe that's less buggy for Figma to simulate. Uh, we're gonna have to try it out. Because after all, drop shadow is basically this, but done automatically. Drop shadow is just taking the rectangle, the object, and then blurring it, you know, taking the, the shape and blurring it. That's all there is to a shadow, essentially. Right, so let's just um, have to make sure the names are the same. So rectangle line, copy and paste here. Rectangle line, cool. And we're gonna also use the skew that plugin for this. It's gonna be, um, right, this looks about right. Um, yeah, so does this fix the problem? Yeah, and it fixed the problem. That is awesome. Yeah, so Figma has a problem with, uh, with this plugin while manipulating with objects in 3D, but if we specify this to be a rectangle, that is blurred and transformed, there is no problem. Yeah, except that it's being currently on top of the button, we don't want that. And also I'm just gonna maybe increase the blur like this, maybe move that. Yeah, I don't like this shadow right here, or quote unquote shadow. I think it should be more subtle. This is, yeah, that's it. Now we can imagine this being, you know, uh, if we think about the context, perhaps we could have like um, an interface that's, that's using this button, you know, it's like, uh, let me turn off the background. You could imagine this like being a prompt to upload some files, for example, in an interface or something like that. You could have more buttons like this or just wherever you'd need a, a button that is really, you know, catches the users, captures their attention and makes sure that it's hard to miss. Right? So if you, if you accidentally hover over such a button, it's really hard to miss. And that's basically all it's about. All right, this is how you simulate a 3D rotation in Figma, since Figma doesn't have a 3D rotation feature, using a plugin called View That. Very useful, go check it out. It allows you to do things like this and you don't even need the 3D transformation. All right, so leave a like if, if you enjoyed this tutorial. And I think I'm gonna make some more stuff with this plugin. It's very interesting, looks very cool. All right, let me know if you like this. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.